States Asthma Hotline. This is Walter. May I help you? Um, hi, my name is uh, Carlos Moreno. Um, I wanted to give you uh, an FYI notification on an incident that occurred offshore. Uh, you work for which company? Uh, BP. Will it impact the coast of Louisiana? No, we do not anticipate at this time any shoreline impact. I'm Tony Haywood. BP has taken full responsibility for cleaning up the spill in the Gulf. The boss of BP has claimed the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico is relatively tiny compared with the size of the ocean. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. We've helped organize the largest environmental response in this country's history. We've been told by the Coast Guard that they are putting miles of boons out to protect these valuable and precious marshlands. However, this is the first sighting that we've seen. We've been out all day. The first effect is uh, the animal that lives just under the water surface. Fish eggs, all kind of little animals, that will be wiped out. When oil reaches the shore, thousands of people are ready to clean it up. Early Friday morning, hundreds of workers showed up to clean the beach at Grand Isle. Now some, including two Jefferson Parish Council members, accuse BP of staging the work in advance of President Obama's visit. So none of those workers who are out there today were hired yesterday? As far as I know, no. Continuing from Katrina, this is like part two. I'm deeply sorry. We have depleted the ocean everywhere, including in the Gulf. There's not enough fish to go around. Just off the coast of Grand Isle, at one point, a large school of fish appeared, flapping in the water, many of the fish bumping into his boat, oblivious to the fact that it was there, the fish gasping for oxygen. George Arneson says he's never seen anything like it during the 15 years he's worked on the Gulf. There's outrage from environmental groups after the Obama administration approved another oil drilling permit from the Gulf for the Gulf of Mexico. The administration insists this well isn't covered by the ban because it will be in shallow water. The Ixtoc well, which couldn't be plugged for nine months, was in roughly 200 feet of water. Now in 2010, we're using the same exact techniques to try to plug a well that is leaking in 5,000 feet of water. My job is to make sure that they are being held accountable. Clearer than ever how BP, with the apparent help of the U.S. Coast Guard, kept the public in the dark for weeks about just how bad things were beneath the surface. First of all, the Coast Guard is part of our armed services, and they're responsible for uh, uh, the coordinating, uh, along with the responsible party, in this case BP, to make sure that recovery efforts are top notch. From where you are in Homa, you must look, up, look out over the marshlands to the south and east there and think if they make it pass from the Gulf of Mexico, the open Gulf, into the marshlands of southeastern Louisiana, uh, just to think of that very fragile ecosystem there is, it, it's really kind of mind boggling. Absolutely. It would, it would be uh, very difficult to clean up and there'd be, there would be significant impact to the animals and the overall environment. I don't sit around just talking to experts because this is a college uh, seminar. We talk to these folks because they potentially have the best answers, so I know who's asked to kick. President of the United States of America is on the case! I'm not going to rest or be satisfied until the leak is stopped. No sleep! No satisfaction! He will be on this thing 24 hours a day right after celebrating the great Connecticut Huskies Women's Basketball National Championship! <laughs> The oil slick in the Gulf of Mexico is threatening hundreds of species of wildlife, including fish, shrimp, crabs, oysters, that make the region one of the most important sources of seafood in all this nation. Folks are seeing dozens of dead jellyfish and sea turtles along the coast in Mississippi. It's not yet clear. They can't know for sure yet, they tell us, whether the oil is to blame, but experts say the numbers are not normal. 
We know it is our responsibility to keep you informed and do everything we can so this never happens again. Considering how big this has been, very little has got away from us. Here is something that has gotten away from BP. It's cover-up effort on the shores of the Gulf. When we tried to reach the beach, seen here and covered in oil, a boat of BP contractors with two Coast Guard officers on board told us to turn around under threat of arrest. This is his BP not out. Journalists from multiple news organizations reporting that they have been blocked from taking photographs of dead animals on the beaches of the Gulf. These devastating pictures taken by Charlie Rydell of the Associated Press. In some cases, cops and local contractors who are blocking access and leading them away, telling them that they are acting on the orders of BP. In fact, the contract local boat operators signed before being hired by BP expressly forbids them from talking to the media. One contractor telling the New York Daily News they specifically informed us that they did not want these pictures of the dead animals they know the ocean will wipe away most of the evidence if only the ocean really could do that yeah it's bad there's a lot of oil that's starting to come to shore of course a lot of the impact is still offshore and in the water so it's a little out of sight out of mind to people but the oil that's starting to come to shore is extensive and yeah we were run off uh, beaches and away from oil uh, oiled inshore areas weeks ago by uh, BP thugs and saying that they're operating on the orders of the Coast Guard or BP and obviously they don't want the images on the, on the evening news so but the wildlife impacts have been extensive the number of dead carcasses that have been collected is just a minute fraction perhaps 10 to 20 percent of the number of dead animals which generally almost always drift uh, down into the water column and, and sink. The National Center for Atmospheric Research released a simulation of what it thinks could happen if the, the so-called loop current, the thing in the Gulf of Mexico, picks up uh, the oil, that it could reach the Atlantic coastline of Florida, the other side of, Atlanta, of Florida within weeks. It could spread up as far as uh, Cape Hatteras in North Carolina and then moves out in the open ocean. Oh yeah, I think it's probable, particularly if this containment cap doesn't work and the blowout, which we know the blowout will keep going for the next couple of months until the relief wells get down there and kill this thing. So if the cap doesn't work, we're going to have three times the amount of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. There's just average people trying to do what we think is right. Outrage on the streets of New Orleans. Protesters gathered to rail against British Petroleum and the U.S. government over handling of the Gulf oil spill. some of these tar balls will go towards the UK in the North Atlantic drift and so some of the oil from BP will be returned to British Petroleum in the UK.